Okay. All right. So uh, as more people join, uh, they will definitely pick up from where we are. So I will go ahead and just begin. Um, want to give a quick thank you to the early birds, uh, all the people who have joined so far. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is the Trace for Tomorrow's very first webinar in this format. I um, want to thank uh, my colleague Mark uh, for uh, tolerating, <laughs> tolerating me during this session, uh, helping out. Uh, Never a problem. Never right? a problem. Thank uh, you to everyone. Definitely. Uh, thanks to everyone in the background in uh, working in Trace for Tomorrow and Merit for helping to organize this session. Uh, we do hope that uh, it will be, you know, relatively short but impactful in terms of the information that we're providing. Um, so, uh, just to go ahead, the, this session really is about what we do uh, as Trace for Tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, you know, you guys can leave here a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, <clears throat> So introductions, I'll go ahead and introduce myself, after which I'll flip it over to Mark to introduce himself. Uh, my name is Donovan Shakespeare. I am the Apprentice Support Specialist here at Trace for Tomorrow. Um, my whole shtick, my job, my role, uh, my passion really is helping people, uh, particularly um, you know, students, uh, persons looking to either start or continue their careers in whatever it is that they choose. I've, you know, had a background working in education all my life, uh, doing student counseling and guidance, career guidance and counseling recruitment. Uh, so that is my background and I'm taking that uh, experience and knowledge here to the construction industry. It's been a very exciting foray for me. Uh, I've learned quite a bit. There are a lot of knowledgeable uh, and very well-respected people in the industry that I've met so far, and it's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, I am really looking forward to uh, the growth and expanding the program and our reach and the, the countless more people that I'm sure I will be able to meet. And uh, in a nutshell, that is really about me. I will have Mark uh, introduce himself as well. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Mark Campbell here. I'm the employer specialist with uh, Trades for Tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm the one who's uh, reaching out to our members to see what their apprenticeship needs are and the uh, potential journey person needs as well, which we do have a recruiting staff that helps us with that. Uh, I've got 20 years industry experience. Um, uh, my background is uh, I've done a couple trades. I've also done sales and uh, I truly enjoy helping people and I, I want to put my best foot forward whenever I introduce myself and moreover, whenever we uh, apply ourselves to helping our members. And thank you very much again for coming out. We appreciate your, your time. Uh, we know it's valuable. So I'll, I'll hand it off to Donovan. We'll get started. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. So I thought it uh, prudent to mention or go a little bit into uh, the Merit Open Shop Contractors Association of Ontario or Merit Ontario for short because Trace for Tomorrow is an arm of Merit. It is the apprenticeship arm where, you know, everything kind of stems from Merit. So I thought it very important to go into a little bit of details for the persons, you know, who are here, who are already familiar. Great. Uh, the persons who have, you know, maybe never heard of Merit are Heard of merit but don't know as as much uh you know this is just a basic overview right so uh merit ontario is a member driven organization right it, we it is a not-for-profit organization as well uh and it is uh, we position ourselves as the voice of ontario's open shop or non-union construction industry right so uh member driven uh Again, the voice of Antar the voice of the open shop non-union side of the industry, and uh, in a nutshell, uh, Merit's whole purpose is to advocate and support fair legislation for employers and employees alike. Right, so it really is about uh, leveling the playing field, uh, understanding, promoting, and uh, um, trying to get everyone a space at the table because you know we do believe that the industry is uh, quite large there is room for everyone uh, we don't need to be stepping on anyone's toes and everyone has a place right uh, ultimately the whole the whole goal is to help to grow the construction industry right um, all, that that is the, the the only purpose really and we try to keep that uh, in the forefront of everything that we do at 
merit. Okay. Uh, so moving on, what is Trades for Tomorrow? So Trades for Tomorrow is a group sponsor program uh, funded by the government of Ontario. Okay. Uh, what is a group sponsor? You may ask. A group sponsor uh, is a collective of employees, um, employers, sorry, that have come together under one banner, that banner being Trades for Tomorrow, uh, those members being, uh, those com employers being members of Merit. And, uh, you know, they have come together to say, okay, we are uh, willing to take on apprentices. And uh, this whole process is being managed by one uh, body, which is Trades for Tomorrow. And uh, through Trades for Tomorrow, you know, we recruit and train employees, employ employees to work for those employers, right? So everything falls under the Ministry of Labor. You see the the term RTA, that's the Registered Training Agreement. Um, this is just a quick diagram to show uh, the basically the two uh pathways so to speak so an individual sponsor is any company any random company out there that uh, has a journey person and uh, you know a, a, an apprentice or an aspiring apprentice can apply to an individual company and go through and get the registered training agreement done with the ministry through that way but then there is a group sponsor programs like trace for tomorrow um where you know we can take the apprentices get the, the registered training agreements done once an, one, of our, one of our employers decides that they're going to be hiring them and uh, we take care of all of that um, process and uh, get everything going. So the main objectives, the main benefits uh, of Trace for Tomorrow and Group Sponsors is that you know we are here to support the growth of the construction industry. We want to alleviate as much of the administrative burdens uh, that you know can come with getting an apprenticeship even started. Um, there's, you know, quite a few things that, you know, persons might find a bit tedious, whether you are an employer or whether you are an employee or an apprentice. And we try as much as we can to absorb all of that. And again, you will see us circle and come right back around to the end goal, which is seeing more apprentices obtain their certificate of qualification. And uh, again, when we see more apprentices uh, obtain their CFQ, get certified, finish their apprenticeships. Ultimately, that also feeds into growing the, con the construction industry as a whole. Okay, uh, so I'll have Mark uh, go through this section. Thanks, Donovan. Yeah, the process of approval for a trade, uh, trade for tomorrow, we prepare the application for a specific trade, uh, whether it be welding, um, uh, electrical, 309A, and uh, we submit it to the Ministry of Labor. And uh, if they give us a, then we go through a process of getting approval for that specific trade. And once we get approval for the specific trade to sponsor them, we can place the apprentices and we'll, we'll take on the sponsorship for our companies. Now, that being said, we don't dictate what our companies do. This apprentice works for the company. All funding goes to the company. We simply support them and we support them to their ticket on both sides and we take on the sponsorship. So we're actively recruiting right at the moment. We're doing 309A electricians and construction maintenance. We, um, uh, in the future, we're looking to do 309C, the domestic and rural, uh, 306A, the plumber, and 307A, steam fitter. We're also looking to advance that and do further. Any uh, Eventually, the ultimate goal is to be uh, an umbrella for all uh, all trades or Red Seal trades in which we can support our members and support uh, the apprentices. And, and the real goal of it is to get our apprentices in the, in the door and get them through to their ticket. Let's face it, there's a generational gap now that's happening with them. Um, with uh, the apprentices and whatnot, and so we're hoping that we can we can do that. We can go. We can for our for our employees. We can recruit and screen the candidates. Uh, make sure they're registered. Make sure that everything is going on, and they can so that our members can focus on training them. We'll take the burden of administrative duties. Everything else, basically, it's giving you time. We also want to give you the ability to find the financial uh, aids available to them. And some of our members, which I've spoken to, they didn't realize that they could go back two years and get the get the previous um, 
uh, financial aids available to apprentices that they have, and we supported them and got that for them. And uh, they were they were pretty elated about that. And um, also, we have access to an employer mentor to help troubleshoot. It's it's basically what this is is this is saying, okay, let's take a mentor program and show a journey person what's hopefully expected of them, and show an apprentice what's expected of them. So when they go into there, they understand what their roles are. They understand how to communicate. And they understand. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Things along those lines. So that when they get there we can go for it and uh you know we, we kind of do the coordination between all administrative and everything you call us you don't have to call the government you call me you say mark this is something i want to sort out yeah absolutely let me find that <clears throat> There's also a lot of them, uh, a lot of companies that might be intimidated by the apprenticeship process. They don't understand it. They haven't been through it. They like just a hand with it. Come to us. We'll support you through it. We'll show you. Okay, yeah, no, it's not that bad. We'll find the right people for you. And we'll get you sponsorship so that you can see and you have all the best ability to train them as best they possibly can and get them into it and get them ready to be that journey person. And we also like to say, hey, listen, guys, if a company is willing to put that into you, you put that back into the company. Stick with them. Stay there. You have a learning is a never just because you're a journey person. The learning never stops. And so, um, all the people that work with us, we appreciate it. And uh, we uh, we uh, we also do the liaison with the government. We'll take all the duties there. Um, and if there's feedback, if you guys want to say, hey, listen, what can we do better? Tell us what we're doing well. Let us know. And we'll do all these things to adapt to your particular needs. And every company, every member is unique. It's not about just generic. Uh, do the same way for everybody. That's not going to work for one company that it works for the other we're going to make it as unique to you as possible what your needs are so feedback's always welcome and donovan here's the apprentice side of it okay awesome thank you so much mark so uh just to go a little bit into some of the services that we offer for apprentices um <clears throat> So essentially, you know, uh, we, we have our website set up and everything. Apprentices will reach out to us. We reach out to, to apprentices. And uh, we, again, you know, we try to absorb as much of the administrative burden as we can. So everything related to registering you as an apprentice, making sure that the application form is appropriately filled out, make sure that all the supporting documents are, you know, up to date, coherent, correct. Uh, everything makes sense so that when we submit the application to get you registered as an apprentice to the ministry, there is as little downtime or roadblocks as possible. Uh, I do, or as, uh, you know, as a program, you know, we do try to assess apprentices when we can when we make contact, uh, because obviously, you know, we're not the ones necessarily hiring the apprentice, the hiring is done with the employers. But at the end of the day, when we say to, you know, an employer, here are a few apprentices that may be good candidates for you, uh, we want to make sure that you know, there is some amount of screening done beforehand. Uh, there aren't just random resumes being sent for sending sake. Uh, if there are any gaps in that prospective candidate's uh, resume, skill set, education, experience, uh, we do screen through that, make recommendations where necessary to say, okay, maybe you're missing a few things here and there. If you say to certifications that might uh, hinder you from actually getting employed at working on a job site, uh, okay, go and get that. And then once that has been, uh, you know, satisfactorily done, then, you know, we can ship that resume off, get that candidate in front of an employer just to start that whole hiring process, right? Um, Stemming from that as well, we do refer them to support services such as uh, English as a Second Language, uh, Canada being uh, multicultural, uh, Ontario especially. Uh, there are persons who are immigrants. You know, I myself am an immigrant, even though my native tongue is English. But you know, there are persons from you know all, all over the world, and uh, they come here looking to make better for themselves, start a new life, etc. Um, and they come here with experience. They come here with maybe no experience at all. Uh, we try not to turn them away even though they again may not be ready to be placed in front of an employer because chances are you know maybe they need help with their english uh you know we go ahead and uh, recommend additional and further training so that they can strengthen themselves strengthen their resume um, be functional on a job site right uh, so again if an uh, apprentice is job ready you know meaning that they meet all the basic require all the basic requirements to actually become an apprentice based on you know what the ministry has dictated uh as well as based on what our employers through mark have uh, specified right because again 
an employer, no, no two employers are, are the same, no two members have the same uh, specifications and requirements and needs. So when an employer says, I'm looking for an apprentice with this particular profile, uh, once that apprentice is deemed job ready, you know, we try our best to get them in front of as many employers as possible. Uh, and then, you know, manage the apprentice's journey because it's not enough now to place an apprentice with an, an employer, one of our, our, our members, and leave them there, right? The, the, that whole monitoring and support aspect is crucial simply because there are so many dropout points during the apprenticeship process, right? So an electrician, for example, is doing, you know, this apprenticeship for up to five years. Uh, there are many exit dropout points for them uh, identified through numerous studies and uh, assessments done you know by the government and other bodies and we want to minimize that as much as possible um, and to provide that mentorship aspect uh, which is you know kind of why I, I am here even though I'm not from the trades but generally speaking mentoring and uh, being someone that an apprentice can turn to uh, for you know the things obviously if there are direct work concerns on the job site that uh, the, the company policy when they're working for a member is concerned, you know, we try not to dabble too much into that because we want you guys to still keep your autonomy, keep your independence. We're just here in the background working to support, but there may be personal issues that an apprentice may want to talk to someone about. Uh, we have an open door. They can always come to us and let us know and we see how best to work with that or work through it. Uh, we do try to stay up to date and help apprentices apply for financial aid as well, uh, because just like with employers, as Mark said, there are, you know, financial benefits that can be um, taken advantage of. Uh, both at the the provincial as well as at the federal level, and uh, we try as our, our best to, to keep abreast of what's happening, any changes, any new money uh, <laughs> that might become available, and help persons uh, apply for those. Right? <clears throat> Again, there is the advocacy side, not necessarily done by us at Trace for Tomorrow, but through merit, as I said. Um, so, if there are trends, you know, that we see that uh, have negative effects uh, as you know as far as procedures are concerned and these are things that may stem from the ministry level that may need you know some examination some you know tweaking here and there we you know through merit through Michael Delardo we do try to make him aware of these things on the ground uh, because you never know right as we just want to make things easier keep things streamlined um, and and keep things moving. And again, you know, talking to the apprentice is one thing, but also, you know, in addition to Mark, as the apprentice support specialist, I am also there to support employers if they feel like they want to talk to me specifically about the apprentice, uh, secure feedback and uh, identify any issues, get them resolved as quickly and amicably as possible. And in the end, uh, this is a, a pretty lofty goal for us in terms of <laughs> providing exam preparation and support because the, the resources that are available right now in terms of helping to prep apprentices for their final examination, it's it's lacking from what I've seen so far. Uh, the ones that are there, uh, it's either, you know, behind a massive paywall or, you know, um, the, the, an organization or person may have Th these types of uh, supports and they're kind of holding it to their chest because it seems to be uh, gold in the industry. But again, we want to give some level of support as far as exam preparation is concerned. A few uh, final year apprentices have reached out to me to ask, okay, what do we have right now that can help them? Not much at the moment, but again, it is something in the pipeline that we're working on to come later on down. Okay. Uh, again, for those who... Uh, are unfamiliar with the whole apprenticeship process. This is just a quick glance, uh, just so that, you know, we can visualize and see what it looks like. Of course, there are only three levels here. The apprenticeship process is between three to five years, but, you know, this is it through start, from start to finish, start, register, you do your on-the-job training, uh, as well as in school, typically in 12-week blocks. Um, and then at the end, you, you sit your CFQ and uh, get your certification, hopefully, All right? So, want to jump a little bit into uh, the Trace for Tomorrow and Construction Ontario uh, side of things. Construction Ontario is another arm of merit uh, in terms 
which provides some amount of support. And I found it necessary to have a quick chat about this because we do work hand in hand with Construction Ontario as a supplementary resource for not only training, but um, finding uh, qualified apprentices and journey persons for our members. Uh, again, you see, we, we Construction Ontario through their recruiters, they aid companies with hiring talent. And it's again, it's not only limited to apprentices, but also journey persons. And uh, again, it's important uh, that I mention it because a lot of persons or our companies, employers may not have the capacity to meet that ministry mandated uh, journey person to apprentice ratio of one to one, right? So there may be, you, you may be an employer and you're like, okay, I, I, I may have a journey person and apprentice already, but there is room, there is, uh, you know, room for more and increased capacity. So at, the, at the, the, the initial stages, you may reach out to us and say, hey, I'm looking for a journey person uh, to start at this particular time. And with that journey person, your capacity for an apprentice increases, right? So uh, even though Trace with Tomorrow is primarily dealing with the apprenticeship side, if you want to hire a journey person to then increase your capacity for apprentices, it kind of works hand in hand. So. Uh, it's important that we mention Construction Ontario and how that works. Um, so apprentices that we cannot directly help. So someone, for whatever reason, based on their needs, based on their profile, based on where they are, you know, in their career journey, uh, we may not be able to directly help them at the moment. But it may be a case where our job board with Construction Ontario can give some assistance, right? Because again, unless you're just simply a flat out not a fit. Uh, we try not to reject uh, anyone and give as much assistance as we can because that's why we're there to help. This is just uh, uh, an example of what the Construction Ontario Job Board looks like. Uh, you know, as an employer, you can post anonymously there. Um, as a as an employee or someone looking for a job, you know, it is there free for you to use. Okay, so uh, a few FAQs. Uh, that I just want to go through very quickly. Uh, does a company or a contractor have to be a merit member to use Trace for Tomorrow? The answer is yes. Uh, this is a service, <clears throat> service offered exclusively to Merit Ontario members. Uh, we do have sales representatives that as an employer, if you're not a part of Merit as yet, you can uh, reach out to them um, and have a discussion on your membership, what it would look like for you based on the size of your company, talk about the benefits, et cetera, which includes Trace for Tomorrow and all the things that you have access to through your merit membership, okay? Uh, can a member company, quote unquote, give us their apprentices to manage? Uh, again, as a member, as a, you know, as someone looking to become a member, uh, you may already have apprentices on your books that are working with you. So the answer is yes we can absorb your apprentices who are already working with a member company. Uh, it's a, you know, very simple process. You know, you reach out to us, we have that discussion. Um, look at exactly what you have in place already and uh, how we integrate them into Trace for Tomorrow and all the benefits that can be had from, from that. So uh, this FAQ is for, as an, as, a, as an aspiring apprentice, how can you join Trace for Tomorrow? So the answer is contact me. Uh, I'll go through the process with you. We do have an application form on our website uh, that you can, you know, complete. Uh, based on that, you, you know, attach a copy of your resume. And from there, I will reach out to you, uh, preferably by a, via phone, uh, have a, a conversation with you. And if, you know, again, there are gaps in your resume, gaps in your skill set, then we go through that together, try to get everything uh, as updated as possible before we present you to one of our member companies based on their requirements, okay? Uh, it is free uh, to use for, uh, as I said, uh, apprentices. There is no charge since we are funded by the government of Ontario. Uh, so you don't have to worry as an apprentice about you know paying anything to use our service. And uh, this is our contact information. You can uh, take a screenshot, a photograph. Uh, that's our... <clears throat> If it is that you feel like you need to reach out to us to have a conversation, again, if you are a, not a member of Merit, you can still reach out to us. We can connect you with a sales representative who can talk to you about membership. And uh, then, you know, we as Trace for Tomorrow can jump in to help. Okay. So uh, again, we try to keep everything short and spicy. 
I, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions at the moment. Mark, do you have any uh, additional comments that you'd like to make at, the, at this time? Oh uh, yeah, it's um, as Donovan said, we are free service to our members. It's something that uh, I hope that we uh, our members take advantage of. <clears throat> we'll do our best to to sort whatever your needs are, and uh, we'll do it in a timely fashion. And hopefully, that uh, if you want uh, some time back on your hands, I'll uh, I'll uh, work with Donovan to give you all the time you can possibly have so you can focus on training. And thank you very much to everybody. If there's any questions, please uh, please put in the Q and A or chat box. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Mark. I don't see any questions at the moment or anyone raising their hands, but uh, again, just to you know, piggyback on what Mark said, we are we're new, we're 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 growing, we're doing a lot of the groundwork, or we have already done a lot of the groundwork, and now we're really looking to get as many uh, apprentices uh, in front of employers, in front of members as we can. Uh, we have been aggressively. Uh, seeking and um, recruiting candidates. We have quite a healthy pipeline of persons who are looking for work. And, you know, right now we're really hoping that uh, whether you are a member or looking to become a member, that you really take advantage of the service because at the end of the day, it is here for you to use. Uh, and, you know, we really do enjoy uh, helping and uh, doing as much as we can. Things may be rocky at the start, but you know, I, I believe that we, we have the talent, we have the team through Mark and myself, Michael, Caitlin, who is our marketing manager, Tony, who is our operations manager. Um, and we're all really dedicated to what we're doing. And uh, we really do hope to interact with you guys a bit more or a lot more moving forward, okay? Uh, so I, I don't see any more questions and uh, with that, Thank you so much to everyone who attended. Thank you to the people who came from the start and stayed. Um, yes. So thank you very much to all. Appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you so much and uh, take care. That should do it for from us. Enjoy everyone. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.